Hello everybody, this is Jen Jeft here, back with the Immersive Engineering in Minecraft, or Minecraft Immersive Engineering mod, plus Turing Complete to design everything. So, when I was working on the substation controls, I realized something. Because the system can address multiple substations, actually it can address up to eight different substations, and that means that there's no continuous signals anymore. And the turn the current substation we're working on on and off has been always a lever. So it's a constant redstone signal to turn the substation on. But that's not going to be a thing when I'm switching from one substation to the next, depending on the configuration of the control system. So I had to make a latch. A, la a latch will save the last input put into it and then can be overwritten for another input. So that way there's a steady signal to keep the substation on. And a latch is basically just, um, where's my marker? Well, that's a convenient green marker. I have no idea where the black one went. It's just funny because I, oh, it's over there now. Okay. So, <laughs> professionalism. So, a latch is fairly simple. You have an input and another input and then you're going to have an OR gate so the OR gate is going to be down here which is a terrible looking OR gate so the this input is going to go into one end of this OR gate and then this OR gate wire is going to go up here and we're going to have an XOR gate again another terrible one I'm just going to call XR and this is going to be OR so this feeds back into the XR and then we have this input feeding into here and then the output of the XOR gate comes down, feeds back into the OR gate and this signal goes out. So what this does is when this input is on, it sends a signal into here, which then turns this on, comes back up here to the XOR gate and this comes down and the signal will go through in a loop. And then when this input goes off, that signal will still be preserved by the OR gate. So this cycle continues ad infinity. To wipe that signal, that's where the XOR gate comes in, because if both of the, if this is on, and if this is on, this gets cut. And so the latch is cleared. And that is how that works, just in a very, very brief summary of how that works. And now I'll show you how I set it up in using Minecraft using immersive engineering. Okay, it's working. So this is the setup here. We've got a couple logic units with some logic circuits in there. I hit orange and it glitches out because it's been sitting there for too long. I hit white and it clears itself out. So now I can hit orange again and you can see it swaps. I hit white again and it swaps over. So now I have the steady signal that I need in order to keep the substation turned on and I can swap between them very easily. I just have to figure out some way to reliably stop it from having both of these on at the same time. But there we go. Latch set up and now it swaps between them. The downside is, that I've noticed when I was working on it, I have to use two logic units, because if I put all the circuits into one logic unit, and I tried this in many different ways using registers and everything, it just won't stay. It turns on, but then the signal goes away, and the signal goes away. But if I have them separately,
it glitches out like that sometimes, which I have to figure out how to stop it from happening. But now it works. Now, I've got no idea. There's a wire cross somewhere, so it's doing that thing. Where it does that. Let's see. Okay. That clears out the system. Yeah, that is weird. It shouldn't be doing that with the way it's designed. I'll just have to add another circuit in there that stops them both from being on like that. Because it shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, both are on. I just have to do some more testing to figure that out, because that's an odd behavior, and it doesn't repeat other than the first initialization. Also, there's another thing that we figured out, too, because we found out last time that I can't put all these things all in the same logic circuit for the switches. I had to separate them out. Which gave me a wonderful fun time of trying to figure out how to pass, well, all 16 colors through in one go without having to use 16 of these and then all the different <clears throat> logic circuits inside them. I came up with another idea. And this is the idea. Basically, um, it's like a solenoid. So currently, this is on. And the signal goes from here, it gets output through that, goes through this block, goes through th this input, and then goes back to the output here. So that way, the signal goes through. But, if I activate the lever or deactivate it the signals blocked I turn it back on the signals on so I've basically given myself a solenoid so I can disconnect and connect the substation at will using codes the codes are in this thing here So this is the all the codes for everything that goes through the wires. So we've got our battery levels here. So this is the input battery from the grid being put in. The output battery from the substation going to the grid. The input output status selector, so I can select between four different uh, lines. Generally, there's only three currently. If we go over here and look outside, I've only got three lines set up. And then we've got the line selector. Whoops, didn't want to do that. So I can have multiple sets of lines, up to eight in this case. Oh no, this is a substation selector. My bad. This is the substation selector, so I can select up to eight different substations. This is the line selector. I can select up to four different lines. So we can select four different lines, eight substations per line, and address up to 32 different substations using these codes here. And this feeds us back the status of those substations. The only two lines that are needed for commands to the substations to turn them on or off are these, right here. These two. So this tells them to turn on or off. And then this is a master switch which allows me to clear everything out if there's a crash or a problem. So I needed <laughs> to figure out how to get 16, 16 of these things to feed through correctly technically minus I don't need to feed these into the substation this is just what picks the uh, substation and that is why I came up with this thing 
Although, personally, I think it is absolutely freaking butt ugly. Because it means when it's off, these wire connectors are just floating midair. Which I hate. But, uh, I tried fl fiddling with it, and I couldn't come up with a better way of doing it. Uh, maybe someone else can come up with a better way of doing it. So, in this episode, we have figured out how to make a switch that doesn't require an absurd number of circuits. And we have figured out how to make a working latch. To provide the steady state signal that it is required to keep the substation on. And I just have to figure out why, on occasion, both of these are staying lit. Which means we'll have both signals go out. Oh well. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll be actually building this in further episodes. See ya. Hello, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon and all that wonderful fun stuff, because subscribing to YouTube is no longer enough. Hit all the things. Hit the like button. Like the comments. Comment multiple times. And... Don't forget to share, but subscribe and hit the bell. See you next time. Bye. I think our tank exploded. Whee! There it goes! The plane or our tank? The ta well, there's a tank flying through the sky.